Hi everyone, my name is Eve Tomlinson and I work in Cochrane as the Network Support Fellow for the Cochrane Cancer Network and today I'm going to be speaking to you about the Cochrane Review Group Network's Equity Priority Setting Pilot. Here are the other members of the team working on this project. We have a number of people involved with expertise in equity, priority setting and the global burden of disease. The idea for a CRG network level priority setting process came about because despite there being substantial progress with priority setting by CRGs in Cochrane, Cochrane's partners and stakeholders continue to raise awareness of key topics that are not being captured. So last year, a CRG network priority setting working group was formed consisting of CRG network senior editors and editorial methods department members to discuss ways to overcome this. The working group came up with the pro proposed solution of an annual CRG network level priority setting exercise focusing on a specific theme that complements the priority setting work done by CRGs. And the aim for this is to take a broad perspective to ensure that gaps in coverage are minimized. We decided to undertake a pilot to test this out. And the first thing we did was select a theme. So in consultation with Cochrane's Editor-in-Chief and Deputy Editor-in-Chief, we selected Health Equity, which is defined as the absence of avoidable and unfair differences in health. We chose health equity to demonstrate that Cochrane is responsive to the increasing focus on equity, diversity and inclusion within and between lower, middle and high income countries. And then we set the aim for the pilot, which is to identify 10 priority Cochrane reviews to update with a health equity focus from a priority setting exercise involving representatives from CRG networks, Cochrane fields, Cochrane geographic groups and key external stakeholders. And we shared the most recent version of the project plan with network teams recently. So this diagram here shows the difference between health inequality and health inequity. Health inequality is summed up in the top box in differences in health outcomes, whereas health inequity is shown in the bottom box defined as differences in health outcomes that are also avoidable, unacceptable and unfair. So we wanted to note that we do have limited resources for this pilot. Um, so we've made a few decisions to ensure we can get some quick wins. Some of these include focusing on finding Cochrane reviews to update rather than new review titles. Um, we're focusing on reviews showing a beneficial intervention with a meaningful impact on mortality. And we're keen to explore morbidity in the future. And we've also based the project on the equity effectiveness loop. The equity effectiveness loop, which you can see here, was developed by the Campbell and Cochrane Equity Methods Group. And it aims to highlight equity issues present in assessing health needs, effectiveness and cost effectiveness of interventions and in the development and evaluation of evidence based health policy. And it provides a method to calculate the equity effectiveness ratio, which assesses the impact of various factors on the gap in effectiveness of interventions across socioeconomic gradients. And you can see with the box that we've zoomed in on that the framework starts with consideration of the burden of illness. Um, the burden of illness is a concept developed in the 90s by the WHO to describe death and loss of health due to diseases, injuries and risk factors for all regions of the world. So before talking about the methods that we've used in this pilot project, I wanted to show you the end result of applying an equity lens to a Cochrane review. So this is really what we're trying to achieve by prioritising reviews in this project. So here you can see two summary of findings tables from a review about vaccines for preventing rotavirus diarrhea by Suarez Weiser and colleagues. And if I zoom in here, you can see that the review has one summary of findings table for low mortality countries seen at the top and one for high mortality countries seen at the bottom. And from displaying the tables separately, you can see the difference in prevalence. So in low mortality countries, which we've approximated to be high income countries here, where rotavirus diarrhea is less prevalent, you can see that the intervention, which is vaccines, has less impact with 11 out of 1,000 fewer children with severe diarrhea. Whereas in the higher mortality countries, there is a higher impact with 38 out of 1,000 fewer children with severe diarrhea. So this is an example of how you could produce a tailored summary of findings table for equity. And this is what we're really trying to achieve with the reviews that we prioritize through this pilot. So now to cover a bit about how we actually plan to get to that point. And we've started at the first point of the equity effectiveness loop by focusing on the global burden of disease using a framework called the Universal Health Coverage Framework. 
The universal health coverage framework is based on the WHO Global Burden of Disease data, which quantifies health loss from hundreds of diseases, injuries, and risk factors. And the framework outlines needed health services across the life course while accounting for potential health gains delivered to populations. And it's mapped 23 effective coverage indicators or conditions across health service types and population age groups for 204 countries and territories from, 100, from 1990 to 2019. And it includes infectious diseases, chronic diseases, and maternal health. And a main focus of the framework is mortality. And you can see here from this section of text from the paper in the Lancet that it also is informed by studies published by Cochrane. So on to our methods, and what we have done is map Cochrane reviews to the 23 conditions included in the Universal Health Coverage Framework. And we did this by searching Archie for Cochrane reviews that had assessed mortality and included at least one summary of findings table. And doing that gave us a list of 359 reviews, which we knew was going to be too many to ask stakeholders to prioritize among. So we decided to focus on reviews showing a meaningful effect on mortality which the team deemed as a mortality effect size of either under 0.67 or over 1.5. And this left us with 118 reviews. We then streamlined the list further to include only those showing an important reduction in mortality. And we did that by reading the review abstracts to find a definitive statement about the benefit on mortality. And if it wasn't clear, we assessed the summary of findings tables to look at events and study sample sizes. So after doing this recently, we've now got 33 reviews, which is hopefully more manageable for the stakeholder group. Here you can see the 13 conditions that the 33 reviews cover, and the reviews come from 11 Cochrane Review Groups across five Cochrane Review Group networks. And you can see conditions include cancers such as breast cancer, cervical cancer, colon cancer, and also conditions such as malaria, chronic kidney disease, and stroke among some others on the list. And some conditions have more than one review. So on to the prioritization, and now we've got the 33 reviews. Prioritization with stakeholders is almost underway. And as mentioned, the aim of prioritizing with stakeholders is to identify 10 priority Cochrane reviews to be updated with an equity focus to assess whether the intervention of interest will truly benefit priority populations which are those at, incre those at increased risk of inequity, lack of diversity, and failure of inclusion, and whether the intervention of interest will reduce or increase inequities. So will it have a bigger, same, or smaller benefit in the priority populations? To do this, we have invited a group of key stakeholders to independently rank reviews, and the assessment panel consists of Cochrane CRG Network senior editors, representation from Cochrane Fields and Cochrane Geographic Groups, Representation from Cochrane partners, such as Pan American Health Organization, Evidence Aid, and the Campbell Collaboration, and health equity experts and stakeholders. When prioritizing reviews, stakeholders will be asked to consider items from the Spark tool for priority setting, which we've modified for use in this project. And the items are shown here and include thinking about whether a review responds to a problem that is of a large burden responds to the needs of the population and global health priorities and some other items listed here. So once we've got the rankings from stakeholders, the CRG Network Priority Setting Working Group plan to consider the feasibility and appropriateness of review update. And to do that, we will use guidance published in the BMJ on when and how to update or replicate reviews, and we'll liaise with CRG Network Senior Editors and CRGs as required. And once we've got the 10 priority reviews, we're going to add them to the priority reviews list and we will we'll talk to um, Cochrane Review Groups and progress to applying an equity lens. And there is thankfully existing methodological support for this from the Campbell and Cochrane Equity Methods Group. So the first piece of support is that equity now has its own chapter in the Cochrane Handbook, which is chapter 16. I've been told to give that a plug. And secondly, equity has its own standard in the methodological expectations of Cochrane intervention reviews. And the equity methods group are currently developing an equity checklist based on the PRISMA equity checklist. And the equity checklist will suggest that equity should be considered right from the beginning of the review process in the way of thinking about priority populations. 
And priority populations can be summarized by the acronym on the slide here, PROGRESS PLUS, which was developed by the Equity Methods Group. So PROGRESS refers to place of residence, race, ethnicity, culture, and language, occupation, gender and sex, religion, education, socioeconomic status, social capital, and then the PLUS includes factors such as age, sexual orientation, and disability. So that all takes us back to the tailored summary of findings tables for equity that I showed at the beginning. And we're going to look for differences in baseline risk or intervention effectiveness and implementation using the Progress Plus factors to identify characteristics across which the intervention may behave differently. And as I said, the end result we want to produce is tailored summary of findings tables for equity and priority populations in the 10 prioritized review updates that we get from this project. And yeah, that's the end of my slides. Thank you very much for listening. And I'd also like to thank all of the people that are on screen here um, for their continuing work on this pilot project. Hey, thanks very much uh, for taking us through that. Um, can't see any questions that have uh, have come in uh, to our, put to you, but um, actually one thing that, I, that you, you did present um, I wondered what it meant. Um, could you explain a bit more about what social capital is in the context of that Progress Plus um, uh, checklist that you, you put on the screen a few slides back? Yeah, so I remember the Equity Methods Group saying that there was a bit of debate around including social capital in Progress Plus. Um, and my understanding of it is that it's to do with your kind of social interactions and your relations, relationships with people. Um, but may want to fact check that but I'm pretty sure that's what it means <laughs> excellent thanks very much interesting that there's some there's some debate about, about it all right um well look forward to, to learning more about about this uh project as it as it as it delivers and I'm certainly flying close uh, close to us with um the um thinking about that that checklist and how we might we might um, make it a more popular thing I certainly endorse the idea that it's something that you would be thinking about as early in the review process as, as possible, but also interested to learn how, uh, through the work that you've been doing, how it applies to updates as well, um, given that we would usually sort of want to front load as much of this thinking as, as possible into the review process. All right, yeah. keep in touch about this, Eve. Look, great Thank to you. see how this, uh, how this plays out. Thank you very much. Thank you.